Now, did that sound like an insane person to you? I, boy, I don't who are you know. talking to, Brendan? Yeah. Brendan, what? who are you talking to? Who are you? Wow. This is all wow. in your head. We're figments of I, your I am my own podcast host, co-host, and guest. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to Bangers, Bounce, and Banter. This is episode 41. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Joe. I got a I'm... co-host with me. Hi, I'm co-host Brendan. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, we have a guest. Today. Hi, I'm the guest, Jason. Hi, congratulations. Thanks for having uh, me. What, what are you going to do with your newfound status as guest on the podcast Three People Watch? Overthrow I mean, kind you of guys. A demotion. Wasn't he like, didn't he own the podcast last time or something? That's Wesley. Yeah. Oh, Wait, is Jason also oh, on Jason the podcast? No. Too? Oh, well, I God. I stepped down after. Ah, okay. Well, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Well, well you know. Uh, we have after those fun... comments Brendan made, you know. What? Oh, you know, after, after, after the after the allegations made against Brendan, I I couldn't be associated with the show anymore. Oh, sense. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't actually know. I was gonna make like a joke or something, but I couldn't think of a, an album opinion of his, like off the top of my head. So make believe is a ten out of ten. Brendan really likes humans, <laughs> as proven in our video reviewing humans. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got a fun episode coming up um first we have music and movie news to go over uh then we have the the album which is the rise and fall of a ziggy stardust by david bowie uh, this is our third bowie album because our our good friend jason keeps forcing them on us i thought it was just the second, second, did second, second. No, what did no didn't we hunky dory and rise and fall oh did you do did black star on the show no, yeah. I thought we did the debut or something. No, yeah, no, I Damn. no, we we skipped the debut, and then the second debut, and then also <laughs> Man Who Sold the World. <laughs> nice. Um. Yeah. Um. And then uh, I guess uh, the the movie the movie we're talking about is uh, the thing. It's No Mad Land, yeah. directed by uh, Chloe Zhao, I believe. Yes. Shao? Zhao? I don't know. Shao? Zhao? I don't. Um, d- 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 please do not hold us accountable if we mispronounce your name. <laughs> um, we are sorry if we do. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into the, the news. The news. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the news? Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I don't know. I think the news is pretty bad. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Nice. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so I guess uh, we didn't have a news section in the last episode. Uh, yes. So uh, we're gonna go over some stuff that has been news for a little while that you probably have heard about by now. But um, Daft Punk broke up. Yep. Oh, uh, that's so been. Sad. Yeah, it's it's very depressing. Um, they, ha- I was like hoping, you know, maybe something, they'd release something before they go, um, but uh, no, they're just gone. Um, yeah, it is it is honestly very sad. Like I I love Daft Punk. Um, been listening to a lot more since they announced their their breakup. Um, and like they're they're just. An incredible band they've always been uh kind of at the forefront of their respective genres it would be dance or house or even their their crossover into the more pop sound with uh, random access memories um yeah. just very very cool guys very cool music uh definitely check them out uh if you haven't homework great dance album discovery great house album ton of fun interstellar 5555 love that yeah. uh, kind of animated version of discovery 
Great stuff. Yeah. Great stuff all around. So sad that they're gone. Yeah. Also, Tron. Is. Who could forget Tron? <laughs> Duh, Tron, dude. It's Honestly, Tron. the soundtrack is probably the best part of that movie. From yeah, that probably. <laughs> yeah. So. Join us next week where we'll review Tron. We're not doing that next week, but... Um, We're not. It, um, yeah. Uh, next in music news, uh, Billboard charts will now include Facebook music video streams. I, uh, I don't know mm, how to... F- sh- sure. <laughs> it's streams of officially licensed music videos on the social media media site. Mm-hmm. Um, so, which I guess that's fair. Yeah, it's it's like plays on YouTube, you know. Yeah, same, mm-hmm. same sort of deal. I mean, Billboard is like so behind the times with how they track <laughs> music, and yeah, it's... I mean, I guess in all fairness, music did. Uh, or music consumption changed incredibly rapidly, so I don't fault yes. them too much. No. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, this is you know this is a change. I I think it's probably a long time coming. So. Yeah. Um, and next in music news, Godspeed You Blank Emperor have announced a new album called God's P at State's End. <laughs> <laughs> I what? <laughs> I didn't hear about this I, until now. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so excited for the new album. Oh my god, post rock legends. <laughs> yeah. I I <laughs> like I'm so confused. Why I don't know. God's P at states and um it's great. Just white amazing. Um there's gonna be four songs on it. Uh we've first track is a military alphabet. Five eyes all blind. Right wait, what okay. Oh no, those are the sides. I'm sorry. There's a bunch mm. of songs on each side. Um I, I, you know, I'm just gonna not read them. <laughs> All right. Um, did they say? Did they give like a length for the album? Uh, did they? If it's only two sides, that would only be like forty-ish minutes. No, well, there's four sides. Oh, it seems. okay. That's good. Um, like an hour. The, vi- the vinyl is also like almost thirty dollars to buy, so I expect it will probably be a double vinyl. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. It's quite, quite, quite the album title. <laughs> yes. Um, next in music news, uh, Cardi B has become the first female rapper with a diamond single for yeah. Bodak Yellow. So good, nice. you know, good for her. Go, yeah, yeah, go Cardi. Yeah, cool. Um, let's go. Yeah. Wow. Um, next in music news. Uh, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd is the first song in history to remain in Billboard's top 10 for a whole year. Whoa. Which is insane. That is insane. <laughs> um, yeah, holy crap. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I didn't even know um, it was out for a year. Yeah, it came out in like 20... Uh, fuck, what? 2019. 2020. Right? 2019 is when no, it came out at the end of 2019. I'm pretty sure. Um, did I it just, just reach 52 weeks though? Yeah, it well, it, it was released it, as yeah. the okay. second, it's like the B side of his um single. The actual what was it? The sing the like it was wasn't was heartless was the first single or after no, it was heartless, was like the first heartless. single, okay. Um so then he released Blinding Lights. Maybe wait, was it? Maybe it was twenty twenty. November 29th, twenty nineteen. Okay, yeah. Um, it took a little while to get up there. Yeah. And then, uh, Jesus Christ, that's two billion plays on Spotify. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, cool. Good job, The Weekend. You made a very catchy song. 
Um, and finally, in music news, um, Justice's uh, record label, Justice being a uh, fairly famous like dance house yeah, music like group, dance. dance music group, I guess. Yep. Um, the record label has suggested that Justin Bieber has uh, knowingly ripped off their logo uh, for Justin Bieber's new album single. I don't know what it is. Um, it. I've listened to the Justin Bieber song. It just was very forgettable. Um, <laughs> I have to look at this. It's like I'm gonna be honest. I don't really. If there's information, um. Here, um, they say, where, uh, where do you see the logo? What do you not have you not clicked on the link? Oh, well, it's in the 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 document. <laughs> I don't look at the document because it takes a million years to load because of the way that you keep it all in one document. Um, yeah, um, basically, apparently, Justin Bieber's team contacted Justice's management about working together on the graphic. Um, and then, uh, the, the, it was, uh, never completed. They never, uh, did so. And they never mentioned, uh, his album being called Justice or the logo that says Justice. Um, so I guess they think because of this, uh, he's like, you know, ripped off their logo. I have to say, doesn't look that similar. <laughs> I I can see their the case that they're making. Um, yeah. The artwork on Justin Bieber's thing it just looks terrible. But um, <laughs> I can see where they're coming from with the logo. I I don't know if there's that much of a case there. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. I think look... if it wasn't for the T, they wouldn't have anything. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're like actually suing him. It, they're just mm -hmm. saying like, "Hey, uh, it seems like they ripped us off." And apparently, uh, they had also um, drawn artwork for Justice's logo. Which actually, if you scroll down, there's a um, Instagram post on the page that actually looks a lot more similar. And that I can actually understand. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah. There, there we go. Boom. Um, movie wow. news. <laughs> um, the Queen's Gambit. The, 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 the thing on Netflix. The show. series. Yeah. The show. The Amazing. limited series. Um, it's being adapted into a stage musical. Um, the what? show's based off a of book. I don't. How I how do, how do you make a chess musical? Chess I don't. Musical. Let's go. Everyone asked for this. Yes. Um, I, I mean, asked for it. All yeah, three of it us might did. Might not be the worst thing. <laughs> I really, you know, I don't. I'm not sure. Um, next in... Next in movie news, Steven Spielberg is bringing Stephen King's Talisman to Netflix. They're doing a limited series in uh, collaboration with the uh, Stranger Things creators. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe, who knows? Maybe it'll be good, but also... I don't know, Steven Spielberg's recent stuff hasn't been amazing. Um, and yeah. finally, uh, Danny Boyle is uh, he's making a limited series um, about the Sex Pistols that will be on FX. Uh, There's a first look thing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, that's it for the news. Wow. Congratulations. Um, we 
did news. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about the album. Okay. Jason, this oh, yeah, was your yeah, pick. Yeah, 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 you want yeah, to tell yeah, us yeah. why you picked this album and how it's so out of character for you to pick? Uh, it's, yeah, there's a real maybe. left field pick for Jason. Uh, well, okay, hang on a second. All right, so the album <laughs> is uh, "The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars" by David Bowie. Um, this album came out in 1972. Uh. We have reviewed one other David Bowie album by my request, Hunky Dory, its predecessor. Um, and, you know, I'd like to take these boys through David Bowie's discography because they have yet to listen to many of his albums. I think prior to listening to Hunky Dory, they had only listened to Black Star, each of them. Um, and, you know, Rise and Fall pretty uh far off from black star in terms of style so yeah uh, <laughs> um but anyways this is a, this is this is a rock album um, Whoa, that's crazy. there's there's like glam rock it has some some bluesiness at some points there's some you know he plays the saxophone at some points that's pretty cool huh uh <laughs> I, this is a David Bowie album, you know. It it really is a David Bowie album. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, you know me, man. What an introduction to this album. Mm. Um, this is interesting. It's this is like, I feel like this is often considered like one of the best rock albums ever made. Yeah. Um, I thought it was enjoyable. Thought it was solid. And that there you go. That's my review. <laughs> it's solid. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I don't think out of like the three David Bowie records I've heard, this is definitely not my favorite. <laughs> I like Black Star way more than this. I also um, like Black Star way more than this. This um, is like a solid rock album. Like it's fun. It's catchy. You have some very interesting elements. Like you have the saxophone. Uh, there's like a lot of piano on this. Um, and there's some like there's some interesting instrumentation. Uh, but it's kind of just a rock album, and I'm not gonna lie, I do find it's kind of boring at points. Yeah, it feels there. There are songs that feel like kind of standard for the time i don't know stuff like it ain't easy or like mm -hmm. i mean suffragette city stuff like that like it's still sort of odd in like a david bowie kind of way i guess but it's not very interesting um i think there's there's plenty of great songs here and there's some stuff that's definitely like inspired from other artists i know uh, like Lou Reed, the comparison is drawn between like David Bowie and Lou Reed a lot. Um, also, uh, like Elton John with the piano on this mm. album, yeah, definitely just reminiscent mm -hmm. of, of Elton John's music. Um, there's still some like great stuff off the album, like Starman. Love that song. Very very fun. Very catchy. I think the ending, Rock and Roll Suicide, is a very very strong ending. Uh, and ties up the, the kind of thematic uh, elements of this album but like as far as just the raw music I don't know this it's good it's not mind-blowing though it's not, yeah. it's not one of the greatest rock albums of all time <laughs> yeah like basically I find everything on this album to be very enjoyable it's well produced. It David Bowie's vocals are pretty great throughout. Um, there's some very interesting, like you know, musical ideas introduced and instrumentation. It's just like it's just a rock album, though. <laughs> like I don't know. It's just it's not like I don't think it's like one of the best produced rock albums I've ever heard or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, it's 
like I guess I just don't know why I'd go back to this over Bowie's more experimental stuff because that stuff's way way more interesting and I think has way a ton more engaging ideas presented musically <laughs> but not to everybody uh, like sure well, yeah, but, but to me uh, yeah we're not everybody that's, to me, well that's I, what i mean though like <laughs> but what were your expect expectations going into listening to this song? it's I'm, considered like one of the greatest albums ever made so i was like i was expecting something kind of mind-blowing i guess or like a really like interesting like a a rock album that has like a lot more experimentation within it because like there are very mainstream rock albums that have this like like really out there interesting experimentation look at like abbey road or something mm. um or like the white album or you know this like pink floyd records like animals and stuff that i think uh do that very well um and like i there, again there's interesting ideas it just is kind of all wrapped in this like piano rock veil that to me brings it down a lot like it's, it's not really piano it's like piano rock glam rock like, like that 70s yeah. like rock sound essentially that to me is just like fine i just don't find that sound interesting um well joe i, I, I told you this was before he started doing cocaine like heavily <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you really have to give him a break. Uh, once we get to Aladdin Sane um, and beyond, I mean, he'll, it'll start to come out. I'm 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 excited for his next stuff because I do know. I mean, you know, somewhere in between this record and Black Star, he starts experimenting. Mm. <laughs> That's when the cocaine comes in. Yeah, <laughs> the the copious I, I, amounts of cocaine. I, from what I know, Aladdin Sane is far more like. Is more experimental than this and much more darker as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that would be interesting. Um, I feel like I would probably enjoy. I I would enjoy this more if I was a boomer. Um, <laughs> not not to nothing against like boomers, but I feel like if I was alive at the time, like when this album released, and because a lot of a lot of this album is like the spectacle of it. Um, mm -hmm. It's very much. Like David Bowie is very much a performer, I'd mm -hmm. say, um, and the uh, kind of listening to this in in twenty twenty one, the there's a lack of that performance aspect, um, and I do feel like maybe a lot of the people who rate this album as highly as they do, uh, they were there for that performance aspect, mm -hmm. and they and they saw that, um, and. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I feel like maybe maybe that's something I'm just missing out on that I really need to to understand this album more. I mm. guess. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I I think that if you you know think about like I like where where are we deriving the basis that the opinion is that this is like one of the greatest rock albums of all time? Probably, I think it's probably from the boomers, as you so eloquently said. Yes, well, that's well, that well, that's true. Like, if you go to like the Wikipedia page, mm. like literally all of the scores are tens, except for uh, Chris Gow's record guy just gave it a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Robert laughs> like, Chris literally Gow. all of them are tens outside of that. Um, and like, I that's where like. I guess a lot of the expectations are like I. I feel like I know people who think this is like his best record, mm. um, and it's like it builds up this expectation that we're gonna hear is like literally like mind altering, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it really just I don't know. It really wasn't that for me. Right. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't have done that, considering, like I mean, you know artists you know take time to evolve their sound so i probably shouldn't have expected that big of a leap from this from hunky dory to this mm -hmm. um there is still a leap like, yeah it's definitely different um 
he's definitely using a lot more interest. Like he's making, I guess, a vibe, and he's experimenting more on this record. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely like it's not as big of a leap as like OK Computer to Kid A or something, but. <laughs> I mean, it's the, yeah. it's the greatest left turn in music history. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Um, just for like reference as well as, um, all the tens it's given on the Rolling Stones like top five hundred albums list. This album places at number forty of all time. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's the highest rated David Bowie record on that list. Um. I mean, Rolling Stones are boomers, so they are would, exactly they are boomers. It is unequivoc, unequivocally. Oh my god, <laughs> unequivocally, the most like mainstream David Bowie. Um, uh, yeah, and like I don't know, I feel like, um, like you know, the mainstream doesn't really appreciate, you know, experimental stuff. At least when it's still experimental. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it can really depend, but yeah, for the most it, part, it it does depend. I would say there's still a lot of room to experiment within mainstream music. Mm. Like, I mean, you can look at like, well, like, I mean, the Beatles are like the obvious example, but like even like nowadays, I don't know, you have artists like Travis Scott and stuff who, or and other people who do like push boundaries but in a very like mainstream sense mm-hmm. um or well i mean i i guess part of that is just they are involved in making a sound that just happened to blow up um but uh yeah i don't know it can, i want more uh... experimentation i want more weird shit I do I do wonder how much like the success of this album is tied to like especially back in 1972 first of all his like character which was pretty bombastic for the time there's really nothing like it around then mm-hmm. yeah um and the- I was I was also going to say just his outwardness um with his sexual orientation especially in the 70s yeah Yep. Um, where he was kind of like a very like prominent figure within the like LGBT community of the time, um, because yeah. he was, you know, that was him. He was wearing that on his sleeves and making it part of his persona and not putting it away. Yeah, definitely. Um, we should mention the concept for this album is pretty interesting. I know it's like. I'd say the concept is a bit more loose if you just listen to the album, and I guess don't listen, look into like the background. Um, uh, yeah, apparently a lot of the the actual concept was written after, and, like the music was already there and like recorded. Yeah, it's kind of a an afterthought, but um, there it is well, technically a concept album. Um, but yeah, but his the character Bowie plays is a bisexual <laughs> alien rock superstar. <laughs> named Ziggy Stardust. Um, which is a pretty interesting concept, I will say. Pretty out there concept, especially for the time. Um, yeah. D- definitely mm-hmm. give him props for being a very creative and interesting um, in that respect. Mm-hmm. You guys have uh, any anything else you want to say? I think I'm good. I can move on to ratings. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can go first. I guess. Um, I don't. I. I still. I enjoy this record. I think there's. There's still plenty to like here. I don't think it's the fortieth best album of all time, <laughs> or anything. Um, I like it more than Hunky Dory, actually. Uh, not as much as Black Star. Matt, just, this is an eight out of ten. Like it's a it's a good album. It's a solid record. Um, I guess if you haven't checked it out, it's worth checking it out just for the kind of historical significance of it and how much 
everybody loves it, but uh, not not my favorite thing ever, really. Uh, it's still good. It's still really like really good, but yeah, I, um, yeah. I think this record's really good. It definitely is. Like I mean, I I probably came off a bit more negative in the review than I wanted to because <laughs> it's just considered like this masterpiece, and I'm not super into it. I don't actually like it as much as Hunky Dory, and I think that's just because there's less songs to me that stick out in my mind on this record. It feels pretty, like, complete, I guess, as a package. Um, and that package didn't impress me a ton, which I think leads to me remembering, like, Hunky Dory with songs like Changes and stuff on that record. Um, I think it's pretty good. It's fun. Um, it's an interesting listen, I guess, but it really was not as engaging as I expected it to be, I guess. Um, I'd give it like a seven. It's a solid record. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think this is a pretty rock solid rock album. I, I think that like, um, I, I think you guys are right in saying that like 40th all time sets very unrealistic expectations for this album to me. Yeah. Um, but there's, still some like standout songs um you can tell he poured a lot of emotion into this record there's mm. um there is a lot of good sound even though it's can stay a little generic um i think it's still pretty well produced yeah. um and mixed and uh, you know i'm at like an eight and a half um i'm definitely like like david bowie's later stuff after this like aladdin saying stands out a lot more to me but mm. um this is a pretty cool album and um i think it set the tone for the future of his career and his um uh, reinvention of himself going forward so i appreciate it nonetheless brendan what are you All doing right. <laughs> what what are you talking <laughs> really? about <laughs> what Beautiful. Hey. <laughs> Out of me. Hey. 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 Uh, so, hey. how about that? Uh, about the Nomad Land. Yuck. Uh, am I right? Yuck. No land. Yuck. 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 Damn. Whoa. Mm. What? Yuck. Damn. What's that supposed to mean? Mm, well, it'll slowly be shown to the world <laughs> through the process of our He's discussion. going to expose himself. And, and what? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so Nomadland is the 2020 uh, film from Chloe Zhao, mm. or however you pronounce her name. <laughs> Um, pretty sure the first name is Chloe, so we got that part yeah. right. Yeah. Um, what if it's oh, hear me out on this? What if it's Chloe? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop this right now. Um, yeah, this was. Uh, I know this was featured at a lot of film festivals, um, and it's now on Hulu. You can go watch it yourself. It's pretty short. It's only like an hour and forty-five minutes. Mm. Yes. Um right there. Uh, and uh yeah. It's it's good. Lots of people, lots of publications listed this as one of the top movies of twenty twenty. Um yeah. it's, it's interesting. Uh you guys were the selection process for this, so I don't know how that went down or whose idea it was. I kinda left well, it up to oh, you too. It was J well I didn't I you said, told me what I right said was, and I was like I oh, said okay. Joe do you want to watch Nomad Land for the Oh race? yeah I, rem I remember yeah And sure. he said yeah sure I'll watch that it's on Hulu and I said nice Okay and then we went and we watched it Cool So Jason why'd you choose this I feel uh I uh I was looking at the Oscars front runners and okay. this one had a cool um poster <laughs> 
I, I thought I thought you were choosing this. I thought you were like yearning for like your wild adventure. Like we watched Into the Wild all together a couple weeks ago. I no. thought were, this this was just on the same sort of kick. But uh, but after watching just, oh, this poster. and Into the Wild, I don't think I ever want to leave my house again. But um, Tiss, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It was really funny because I was um, I was like watching in this movie along and I was getting like the Into the Wild vibes and there's the scene where she's floating down the river naked. I was like, ah, oh, I've seen this one before. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it just is Into the Wild. Hey, what it's about the fun. scene where she shits for no reason? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was, you know, I don't know. I really okay. like the scene where she just poops and then it's never discussed again. No, it's just it's just showing a lot of a lot of this movie is showing the ups and downs of of the nomad life. I think, and yes. it, it, indigestion uh, is one of the downs, definitely. I, yeah, I so. guess. Mm. I so I say I guess I should. Overall, I enjoyed the film, but it definitely feels kind of aimless at points it in does. the story. It very like, it's does. very, like, there's, like, moments where I'm like, oh, man, this is, like, incredible. And then there's other, like, chunks of the film where I'm like, I, what's the point of this? Why show this at this point? You don't feel like you're making more of a point or, mm-hmm. it, like, exploring this concept more. Um, yeah, and it leads it to kind of drag. There's like parts towards the middle, especially where I'm like, I don't understand why you're showing me this. It feels like there needs to be more to a lot of these scenes. Um, and I think that when it is genuinely really interesting, like when she first gets to like the nomad, like I forget what it's called, like the meetup with all the other. Yep. Uh, yeah, the band dwellers that part is like really amazing I think there's a lot of like interesting like connections and conversations had uh, there um, but also like th- there's like other points where I just feel like it's just nothing's happening essentially <laughs> and on I feel like, I mean, like, on the one hand, that could be, like, kind of the point is that sometimes oh. it's kind of boring. Oh, was I? No, you're back. Okay. Um, did you hear what I said? Or... Yep. Um, so, yeah, the point is, like, nothing's happening and life can be kind of boring, but then I feel like that's not emphasized well by the film, if that's the case. Um it doesn't feel like it feels like the film doesn't really do a good job of exploring say like the work that the main character has to do or uh the like loneliness at points that she feels or um even at points like the relationships just aren't that well fleshed out um I think there are individual moments that really shine through, um, especially when like the music comes in. Um, I love, and there's like montages of just her like walking around or exploring nature and stuff. Um, those moments I think are really great and well done. And also like there's certain conversations she has with certain, with some people that are like really fantastic. Um, I just think like it needed more to it. So I I kind of want to go ahead. Sorry. I want to like give a quick summary of the movie real quick. Cause we we didn't really do that. Um, so this film, no bad land. Yeah. 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 Um, 2020 film stars Francis McDormand, uh, who's Fargo lady, best known for Fargo lady. Probably. She does. Um, she's an amazing actress. I also think she's really yeah. great in this film. She's she does a lot of. She's been in a lot of films, but uh, yeah, great actress. And she is playing a character, Fern, who um, kind of lost. She lost her job and she lost her home, 
uh, due to the 2008 recession, the, the cascade of effects from that. And she decides to live in a van, become a nomad in the uh, American Southeast, I guess. Uh, it's Midwest. Southeast, Midwest. Southeast. There, yeah. She kind of goes all over the place. I'm pretty sure she Southwest. goes up to Sorry. the North Country, which is like the Midwest, but high up. Yeah. She did. I think the majority took place in Arizona. There was the yeah, be... meetings with. Yes, that uh, was Arizona. She also she goes to like the ocean at one point. I assume. Yes. I don't know if that's the ocean she's or if it's in, one of the Great Lakes. Well, she, she's also at at one point she's in like redwood forests. She's out yep. in like like Oregon and that kind of area. Um, she kind of goes all over the place, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. I do like that it kind of never really tells you where she is at all, outside of the guy uh, or the meeting or whatever that she goes to. Yep. Um, it does kind of, I think, help emphasize like the exploration aspect, sort of, of the film. Um, mm-hmm. and, like, yeah. To some extent, she is like kind of free to do whatever she wants. That's yeah, that's definitely good. And most of it is we're just following this character around yeah. on her various adventures in her van. Um, the film features some like real life nomads, I believe. Uh, Bob Wells, Linda May, and and Swanky, I think, yes. are real life nomads. There might be others. Probably are others. Um, but Bob Wells name. is is quite significant in the van dwelling community. He's a popular yep. YouTuber, actually. Mm. Um, with five hundred thousand subscribers, he runs a YouTube channel, Cheap RV Living. Oh. Um, that's so, where that's literally featured in the film. Is yes, like and his videos. <laughs> Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, which is the community that they actually go to in the yeah. movie, is a real thing. Ah, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Um. So Francis McDormand is kind of just, you know, inserted into this, you know, real life thing with manufactured experiences that probably mirror what it's really like to live in that um, community. Um, yeah, I, yeah. So would you say we've summarized the movie? Yeah. It's, well? it's, yeah. it's tough to summarize the whole thing. Cause there's so many like little vignettes in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's not really an overarching storyline or theme or anything like that. No, nope. it's not really any character development besides like Dave, I guess. Well, um, I mean, I'd argue there is, but it's less character development and more you learn like, oh, I, I, over the course of the film, you learn way more about the character. Yeah. And why she decided to become, like, a nomad, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, and also, like, I mean, I'd, I'd argue there are overarching themes to some extent. Um, like, throughout the film, you see people who are, you know, very old who are nomads and kind of, like them having to like you know forget about or try you know trying to just i guess somewhat forget about their past um and you know uh do something with the rest of their remaining life uh, oh, okay I don't know. That's I don't... Like emphasized by like multiple characters. I feel you have uh, I forget her name, the person who had cancer, Swanky, mm-hmm. Swanky, Swanky. Um, who's just you know just going up to maybe not forget their past, but just like do the most with the rest of their life, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's um, a better way of phrasing it. Um, yeah. I, um, I or, well, I mean, like, Frances McDormand's character is sort of trying to forget her past to some extent, or mm-hmm. trying to move on, I'd say. Or not, well, mm-hmm. not move on, but, like, it's it's, it's hard to say because she definitely like... still remembers her husband and everything, but it feels like throughout the film she kind of can't give him up. Exactly. I feel like Frances McDormand is trying not to move on, and I feel like that's very much exemplified by how the movie ends where she visits 
empire again. Yeah, which, and then she, leaves. Yeah, and then she leaves. The, the movie starts with her leaving empire, and the movie ends with her leaving empire again. Yeah. Which is, is interesting. But yeah, I was going to say, because you're saying forgetting the past, and I feel like she has that conversation with um, with Bob Wells about how, you know, you always want to, you always remember people as long as they're remembered, they're alive. Um, yeah, I, I shouldn't say forgetting the past. It's like running away from the past, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say ignoring it, basically. Yeah. Um, and Bob Wells brings that up where he's, or well, it's not, it wasn't that he was ignoring the past, but he's trying to figure out how to move on, what he can do with the rest of his, you know, life. Yep. Um, yeah. And also, we see that with um, with Dave, who, uh, who he essentially ran away from his past where he was, uh, he was an absent father. Yeah. He, he goes back and becomes a non-absent grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, so, Dave. I, um, I guess, so, um, to start complaining, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a I have a problem with so this this film is it doesn't have an overarching plot doesn't you know it doesn't have rising action climax the traditional story mm-hmm. elements um, no so it is it's much more like a year in the life almost of like a nomad it's supposed to shine light on the nomad lifestyle using this fictional story as an engine and mm-hmm. it's aimless in doing so and it almost just feels pointless to put like a prolific actress to portray that role like if if this is what you wanted to portray why not make a documentary directly about these people living their lives uh, why why try to force like a half-baked kind of like fiction story into that because often fiction allows you to explore themes and ideas much more in depth than a documentary does. Mm. And I think that but is exemplified I, I didn't, by the film. I like, didn't even think that the themes that were, you know, laid out were even the forefront of what was happening. I mean, it I would I would argue, you know, what you're saying is I would be more so looking at what themes the film is presenting in a fiction style, but the themes and more so like the feel and experience of the film like a documentary is great at showing you know things that happened and the experiences of those people but it doesn't allow you often it really doesn't allow you to feel what they're going through in a way that um allows you to kind of insert yourself into that situation um yeah where I, think, I think fiction stories allow you to do that very easily um, because they ha- they're they much more driven by emotion a lot of the time. So there's uh, the one, one documentary. It's sort of not a documentary, but as I was watching Nomadland, it reminded me of uh, Koyanis Katsi for people who know <clears throat> what yes. Koyanis Katsi is. And that is, Koyanis Katsi is like a completely not personal film there's there's no dialogue the entire film there's no characters or anything it's just images really uh and a fantastic philip glass score oh my god yeah um but you know uh a lot of a lot of what quinn escotzi is saying is about the beauty of nature and um sort of going back to nature that kind of ideas those kind of ideas rather um and nomadland it has something to say about that as well but those two films say it in completely different ways um and i definitely think exploring a fictional narrative um gives it you're able to, to shine a different light uh and tell a story uh, yeah. and and explore things differently than a documentary I, uh, especially i guess i kind of wish that um Zhao actually committed to that story more so than you want um, more of a narrative essentially yeah because if that i i just don't see why going in the middle benefits like either side like i don't get me wrong i appreciate like the 
the real life nomads being cast into this film. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's great. Um, but like, I it just felt I don't know. <laughs> it's just like mm-hmm. it's very undriven, but it's supposed to make you feel something. And I feel like it's... if that was the goal, like drive home those points. Don't so... don't do it in an aimless kind of like disjointed manner i guess yeah so you're looking for a less atmospheric film at the end of the day i think yeah this film is very much driven on the feeling that like the music and kind of interaction like it's it's driven just on like interactions and the camera work and Mm -hmm. the music rather than a narrative and i like that's very dependent on what kind of person you are as Mm -hmm. to whether or not Mm -hmm you enjoy that kind of thing um i do agree with you that it does feel aimless um at least for me it's at certain points i think it's a lot of times where i think it makes some very interesting commentary on that lifestyle and does i think it does a good job of exploring why people are drawn to it um but it definitely feels like there should have been more to some parts of the film Mm -hmm. um just i don't know more more of a point i guess at certain times um yeah uh if i if i may i definitely have i like this film i definitely have some pretty significant complaints with it i do think it it is a bit too atmospheric um at times uh i think by the end of the film i'm just like okay you can wrap up now and we don't need another like just image and piano section i think i i also i'm not the biggest fan of the score i want to say i liked it but i think by the end of the movie it it was wearing a little on me um i do hmm. well i just want to say this interesting because i think the end of the film is one of the most one of my favorite parts of it because that's kind of like she goes back home or not yeah. she goes to her sister's place and then also with she uh goes to uh show, is his name joe joe's dave house. dave dave okay <laughs> um that oh. was your name is joe oh oh man. common mistake yeah um but uh like the those parts of the film i feel like it does a much better job of kind of again exploring the main like kind of purpose of it yeah um, i agree i still think um within those sections i feel like those maybe uh took too long there was a okay there was one scene i don't for me it's like the entire like most of the middle of the film is very mm-hmm. like mm. i also i wish we saw more of like her traveling around because we see her in these different places but we never really get the feel of like the journey from those places um which i think is something that i wish i wish the film showed i think that would have been interesting and would have um i think given the film a, a better feeling of, of progression i'd say can i can i also I, say that i i feel like there is not enough contrast between the nomad community sections and like the house sections like david's house and his in her sister's house um i i guess like maybe that's the point (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but there like i feel like there was no nothing that would suggest that fern would prefer being a nomad versus living in those scenarios but she very clearly did um i disagree like i feel like i mean i guess i feel like there's often it's often emphasized that she's just not comfortable in these areas like she it like appreciates what people are doing for her but it feels like like it feels like she's just never quite at home i mean you can see that by her like in the middle of the night getting up and going into her van um but i can definitely see where you're coming from because she does seem somewhat comfortable while in uh the houses at points um 
But I do feel like the film does a good job of just showing that she's not quite at home. Um, and also how much she cares for, you know, her van and uh, stuff like that. Um, I do. Also, I want to say, I don't, I feel like there's certain moments where I got this feeling and other moments where I didn't get this feeling. So it's kind of weird. But I feel like um, Fern kind of had, the character has a hard time admitting that, like, she she needs help and she could use the help from, like, other people for, for yeah. her home to live in. Uh, she wants to be very, like, self-sufficient, it seems. Yeah. Um, and she's she criticizes uh, the, the people who offer her a helping hand oftentimes. So, yeah. I just, that, that part made sense to me, definitely. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, I wish there was more time spent just showing the work she had to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, like, she works at, like, Amazon, uh, which was surprisingly positively represented. (laughs) Um, it felt like, um, like, it didn't seem like the work was necessarily fun, but it definitely was like hey amazon good place to work you know conditions good (laughs) i mean i feel like they probably treat their their seasonal workers okay which is what she was so Mm -hmm. so this is uh i think it's directly inspired by a book of the same name Mm. um and i don't know the background of the writer of that book but um i i forget the name of the amazon program for campers that is referenced in the um Mm -hmm. the film um but i I, you know if the writer like directly was observing people like benefiting from that program especially during you know the the out or the um fallout of the 2008 market crash Mm -hmm. um that's probably why it features such a prominent role but it didn't feel like very like (laughs) advertising to see giant amazon but i don't know maybe that just triggers me (laughs) like amazon in 2020 is probably a little little, hmm but um yeah um but i do yeah i do feel like i wish it emphasized like the work she had to do more so um like she is doing work a lot but I just want to see more of just her doing like menial tasks essentially to kind of show how she has to fulfill how what she has to do to fulfill this lifestyle. Um uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's uh another thing I'm also it cuz it it shows her working. I feel like I guess I personally wanted to get into more of like the financial hardship and like economics of it, that kind of lifestyle as well mm-hmm. a bit more because we see really only see that when the van breaks down and she she doesn't have the money to fix it right yeah um but there's never really any any mention there's of... not mention i think it's somewhat subtextual you can see like a lot of the food she eats is pretty cheap when she yeah. the chicken can of chicken noodle soup i was like and gagging because i hate that stuff <laughs> campbell actually had canned it's soup. it's the like you can get like progresso versions yeah. that are like actually decent but like oh my god the campbell's chicken noodle soup is so it's different. not that bad it's awful <laughs> like, I actually, like i, I tried it before and i actually like could not finish i i cannot believe your like obscene hatred for it Wait, it's just disgusting tasting. Like, why? It just tastes like shit. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> um. <laughs> For, forget Caramel Macchiato cereal reviews. We're doing some chicken noodle soup reviews. Oh, I'll get a chicken noodle soup review. <laughs> um... Yeah, I I just feel like it. I wish there there's some aspects of that the nomad life that I wished explored more that it a film barely touches upon. Yeah. Um, but overall, I still I still really enjoy the film. I think it's it's very cool. 
I'm I'm down with that kind of atmosphere. I think yeah. it portrays it well. Uh, unlike Into the Wild, Boo. <laughs> <laughs> that movie I... blows. <laughs> she said, you it doesn't rated, blow. It's she said, you rated it higher than Nomadland. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what well, film is solid? I am very clear it. about why I don't like Nomadland. And uh, listen, Into the Wild, not a good movie, but at least it has a fucking. You gave point. it a six out of ten. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna give Nomadland a lower score. No, you're <laughs> like it's not, not a good movie. A six a is not good. A six, a, six, a, six, a, six, a six is a positive rating. That's a sixty. That's a fail. F. That's a no. F. No. We letter grades to... are dumb. Don't don't compare We're them to letter grades. We're gonna have an entire conversation about why treating like a six as like a bad is so stupid. It's I'm sorry, so but like I think it's just the dumbest shit. It's. Well, like, well, you know what? Maybe we're not on the same page, Joe. Maybe Mason's rating scale from IGN is like, and it's like that game's fucking awful, it's so bad. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've I'm been trained to average. do that. I mean, a six is decent. A six is like an average score. It's like it's like I think it's above average personally. Like I consider it like a slight, like a little bit above average. There's more good in the film or media. Well, bad yeah i feel like i mean i i'm slightly positive but i feel like just like movies music film and in general is like slightly positive so that's what i'm saying yeah um uh, anyways yeah letter grades dumbest shit ever i actually don't think letter grades are bad but it's like you need the specific context i look i'll do an entire video about grading systems and why i think letter grades are like not the best if you want like a measure of quality but are really good uh for some reviews because it they have a tendency to make things look more positive mm -hmm. uh, than you necessarily feel and i think that can be very good in just recommending people stuff because you know if there's a movie that you only would give like a six out of ten it's like a b on a letter grade and that like a b is like that comes off a lot more positive than a six out of ten I think that's very good. I think that's fair. Um, yeah, well, we might have a, a whole video about rating <laughs> systems at some point. Who maybe, knows? maybe we a six a out of say. ten is 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 bad, and then <laughs> like like maybe like a four is like really bad. You a know, four is like and a like really bad. A one like, makes me wish like, I didn't have eyeballs. Bad, and a zero. Like, why the fuck did I watch a zero film in the first place? You know what I mean? Do you even have a zero out of ten film? Um, uh, su su Suburban Sasquatch, I think, is a zero. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wait, I, I have some other zeros, I think. Uh, there are, you know, zero films do exist, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> you, uh, well, have you seen Cats? I haven't. Oh, okay. you should watch, you should watch cats. Don't watch cats. Cats is a zero. Cats is a and zero. Oh, not Star Wars joking. Episode Nine is pretty close to a zero. It's not that yeah. bad. It's not, it's not that, that bad. bad. It's like Saw, not good. Saw could be a zero. Jesus, Saw is not that bad. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get vilified for saying Saw <laughs> is a zero. Oh I have God. Avatar at a one. That could be a zero. That's a fair Maybe. one. Wait, blue people. Okay, wait, no. Yeah, blue people's not that bad. I, I haven't say... seen the Last Airbender. Moon, I have as a one and a half, but I was more generous a year ago, and I think that's probably a zero. Jeez. No, I'm just kidding. 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 But you, I fucking you're hate like Moon. One of the harshest critics. I don't know why. <laughs> the Moon fucking stuff. blows, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Moon is so dumb. Would you like it's some hot great. sauce with your beans? <laughs> <laughs> the robot's great, man. I also like the robot. He's you funny. know what? It's made by David Bowie's son, and David Bowie's son. You know what? I, after thinking about this in the matter of five seconds, so he basically he stopped uh, the David Bowie biopic from using officially licensed David Bowie music. Yeah, he's uh, good. He probably saved David Bowie's legacy because we saw what Bohemian Rhapsody did. 
that that's out by the way you can go watch that um if you want to it's called starman it's supposed to be terrible that's out <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it came out in 2020 <laughs> i literally like just saw it the other day and i was like what the fuck how did i never hear about that it came out yeah um anyway are we going to do, do scores? Oh, wait, I have one more actual zero. So the only one, the only real zero is Suburban Sasquatch. The other zero, Antebellum with Janelle Monet. That movie fucking sucks. Uh-oh. <laughs> that movie is horrible. Oh, my God. Anyways, go on. Oh, man, are we going to just do worse, like, zeros? Because, like, I think, like, there's, like, four films I'd give a zero. I have a list on Letterboxd. Hold up. Yeah, I do too. I so Cats is a zero. Movie forty three is a zero. Uh, after last season is a zero, and also the Lorax is a zero. Okay. <laughs> yep. I have the same first three as you, but I also have Zapped is a zero. Oh, Zapped's pro. I should probably put Zapped's probably lower. Did you watch Why all are... of Zapped? No, I just watched the first fifteen minutes, and then it was like it's a th- th- yeah, half start. I was there with you. I, yeah, I I'm, never, I'm never gonna watch it. Like I just, it, I, I don't need more. I know what the film is. It's awful. I don't like the first 15 minutes. The rest could be like 2001. Literally, just could the rest of the film be 2001, and I'd just be like, it's still half a star. <laughs> yeah, it's a zero. <clears throat> oh man. But uh, no bad land. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Sorry, right. yeah, I don't have uh yeah, I in overall I enjoyed No Man Land. It is definitely aimless at points. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um it's definitely aimless at points and I think it definitely uh could, I don't know, if you're not into something that's kind of atmospheric, this probably won't be the best. Uh, choice to watch but i think it's a very interesting exploration of the nomad lifestyle um and overall i I enjoyed it i'd give it like a seven out of ten yeah okay um i i like this film i think it it looks it looks good um it's for the most part uh feel ish good it's interesting i like it uh very atmospheric Um, but I was kind of in the, that sort of vibe. Uh, I don't feel like uh, it has its fair share of problems, but, um, it's still, I, I don't know. It's, it does, it's, it does what it set out to do. I think it does it well. Um, there's definitely, I wish there was things it did more of things. I wish it did less of, but still overall, um, very, very enjoyable watch. I'm at an eight out of 10 yeah uh i'm not (laughs) uh this is just you know it's not for me this type of movie i could see it being for other people but when i sat down and said that i'm gonna put a an hour and 45 minutes of my time um to spend watching a movie i want to like feel like that was worthwhile after the fact and um I, I just kind of felt like this is the kind of thing where you could walk away for a 15 minute break and come back and not have missed anything. And uh, I just, that was the whole movie and I just felt bored and I don't know. It's just not my style. Um, as you can see, other people, you know, will like it. I think it's worth trying out. I mean, it, it won the Golden Globe for best drama. Um, so, you know, some people liked it, but I'm not on the Academy. So, um, I gave this a five. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's the podcast. Wow. There you go. That's crazy. Next week, we're going to be same here again, but we'll be reviewing... White Pony by Deftones. Yeah. The, that's the album. And uh, the movie is going to be The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie by Luis Buñuel. 
I hope I pronounced his name and right. You it is not. French. <laughs> Louis, sure. It's probably Louis. It's Louis. Uh, Louis. Oh, fuck. I don't remember how to pronounce his last name. No, no that's not. No, Wikipedia. Goddamn. I will get the pronunciation. What, what, we're working. When yell. When yell. Yeah. Take French? When yell. It's oh. Spanish. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It is. <laughs> when yell. Or. Buñuel. Buñuel? <laughs> ah! Okay. When you Whatever. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to. We're going to talk about the the movie and the album next yeah. week. Yeah. Any special yeah, yeah, guests, yeah. guys? What well, do you want to come back on? Oh well uh Can no. Uh, oh, but huh? I was just wondering, you know, you got any any hot names joining you next week? Um any celebs? We have yeah, we have David yeah, yeah, Bowie. Yeah. David Bowie. Nice. Yeah. We're going to his his uh, grave. <laughs> oh <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to end this podcast. Have a good <laughs> night, everybody. Uh, <laughs>